or the vote. And that's why how we use our political parties must be highly nuanced because political parties are institutions, democratic institutions. They are institutions that should function in a democratic society to contest for power through citizens deciding whom to give power and how they should use that power. But if our citizens don't have power to give, if they have no vote, it means that political parties cannot do their traditional function of seeking power from citizens because they are seeking power from those who don't have it. The power is with the gunmen. So what we must do as citizens, whether organized under the whatever we call political parties today, or whether organized under civil society uh, organizations, whether organized under faith-based organizations, or whatever form of organization, whether our traditional institutions of, of clans and uh, chiefdoms or whatever, what we need to do as a, a, a society that has no power to decide is first of all to fight, just like we fought the British, we must fight the gunmen to regain control over their country, to regain the power to decide for their country. So elections, and this is what, uh, in my case, uh, Stella, you pointed out rightly that I have contested four times in elections. I, I must say that in the first two contests, I was still under the... Uh, slight, I can't say that it was much, but the slight hope that indeed if citizens are sufficiently informed about the capture of their country, about how they need to organize, that possibly we could organize and assert the will of people through an electoral process. But I in in the the four elections I contested in in two zero one, there were no parties. Parties were not allowed to function at that time. Everybody could only contest for power as an individual. The individual merit of the end of the movement system was the one in place. And I had been a soldier. I was released from the army only four months before the elections. So. Even though I participated in that election, there, were, there was no infrastructure to use. There was no time there. So I could think that there were excuses within which one could say, possibly, if these were not there, we could have done better. And of course, after that election, I went into exile for four years. I returned, unfortunately, on the eve of the next election in 2005. Again, just about four months to the election and spent most of it in prison because as soon as I got back, I was detained. That's when I was charged with treason, with terrorism, with rape and all other things. So again, we went into the election of 2006. The parties by then had been allowed to form. And in our case, FDC had formed, had just formed. It was registered in 2005, uh, a, a, just a short while before the election. So again, one could reasonably argue that there was no preparation infrastructure-wise and uh, time to mobilize and to inform citizens, to rally citizens to, 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 to assert their will. But for me, the cutoff point was in 2011 because I spent the subsequent five years from 2006 to 2011 here in the country I considered that what we did in terms of mobilization, organization, um, uh, influencing the formation of will was really uh, reasonable. And I was able to witness firsthand all the shenanigans that uh, 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 rolled out in crippling that possibility of citizens asserting their right to decide. 
And that is why after 2011, I came to the uh, unequivocal conclusion that an election in and of itself cannot lead to a change to the freedom that the people of Uganda lack, to the rights that they lack, that it will not deliver those. And that what is needed is a struggle, is a fight for our rights, a fight for our freedom. And that is why in 2012 I stepped down as a leader of a party to try and become part of a broad movement for change. Uh, that's when we started uh, what was called Activists for Change. So uh, to wind up uh, your question, I don't believe that Ugandans have a vote. They are totally disenfranchised. They don't have any franchise. And the struggle is a struggle for a vote. And in order to struggle for a vote, yes, we can organize in our different parties, in civil society groups, but we need to have a common front for change, for freedom. Freedom is not partisan. The rule of law is not partisan. The, uh, having a constitution, a, a, a constitutionalism is not partisan. All these are primarily uh, tenets that all of us must unite to fight for, which once we get, then we can have a transition to a situation where we can have contestation uh, uh, in a democratic dispensation where citizens can make uh, decisions and give power to those whom they like and remove it from those they are not satisfied with. That's my view. Thank you very much. Well, um, thank you so much, uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besije, um, uh, for your submission. And um, I will capitalize my question on um, uh, um, uh, political independence. And um, uh, still, before I go to the next question that is directed to um, uh, the Right Honorable David Lewis Rubongoya, um, I would still um, love to invite um, Honorable Minister Nobat Mao. If he's in the audience, kindly request for the microphone, mm -hmm. and we shall actually add you as a speaker. Now, um, uh, Right Honorable um, uh, David Lewis Rubongoya, on 9th October, um, uh, we saw that um, Uganda police actually uh, cordoned off um, uh, the National Unity Platform headquarters um, and also arresting you along with um, uh, the party spokesperson, the Honorable um, Joel Senyoni, and other supporters of the National um, Unity Platform. And at the time, um, a report has to be produced on the floor of Parliament um, uh, regarding such um, inhuman and illegal actions. We see um, mm -hmm. uh, the Honorable Chinya Matama and other female members of Parliament attack Honorable Zake. So my question is going to be, um, uh, as a leader of a political party, and the majority opposition political party uh, in Uganda's national parliament. What role do you think um, uh, the opposition political parties are supposed to play, or opposition members of parliament are supposed to spearhead in this struggle to completely liberate Uganda from um, chains of tyranny? Over to you, David Lewis. Much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Solomon. I really think uh, that, uh, you know, the, the question of capture needs to be understood in its proper context, that uh, all institutions in our country are under capture. And of course, the very, very first institution is parliament, parliament which should be the vanguard of the people, parliament where representatives of the people should be uh, meeting to deliberate on uh, matters affecting the country, and of course, to hold the government accountable. But uh, as you can see in our country that, uh, you know, parliament, just like the judiciary and all these other institutions of government have been uh, captured. And
institution uh, will, will try to come up and, and stand in his way. He will come in with, with full force and uh, <clears throat> either dismantle it, uh, bribe members of parliament, compromise uh, some, or you know, arrest others, and, and do those kinds of things. So I think uh, parliament needs to be liberated I itself. So we cannot just rely on parliament or any other institution for that matter, but uh, we, we as NUP view parliament as just another front. Uh, where, because uh, there are so many cameras there, the media is always following up what's going on there. So we always want to use parliament as one of the fronts. But if you talk to those members of parliament, you, you'll see the challenges uh, they go through. But very importantly, and what every time I, I normally ask Ugandans not to just talk about uh, the members of parliament who get compromised, indeed those who you've seen fall off and say today, uh, I'm, I'm no longer NUP, I'm now following uh, either Genome 7, his son or whatever. What you need to ask yourself is the amount of money that goes into these kinds of uh, ridiculous transactions. You know, if, uh, and, and that's what we, we've been talking about, uh, and, and uh, this conversation about the challenges in FDC, one of the things that people have missed out so much is interrogating. You know, we are talking about money, which uh, people say that the source was state house. This money came from uh, the regime. But this is not Genome 7 is money. He did not sell cows for God's sake to uh, compromise leaders in, in FDC or do whatever kinds of things he's been doing. This is money which should be improving the lives of the people of Uganda. This is money which should be going into education, it should be going into health care, which should be going into improving our roads, which should be going into all th sorts of things to make the lives of Ugandans better. So um, I think that's something that uh, is very, very important for us to always think about, that uh, the, the, when the members of parliament are being compromised to pass certain laws or when they are, uh, you know, being uh, bribed to switch from one party to, to join NRM or to do whatever, all that is going in there is money that belongs to the people of Uganda. So for me, I think uh, that the opposition uh, platform in parliament is very important, yes, but you cannot rely on it because, uh, as you know, dictators everywhere will always try to uh, either compromise uh, people who are in uh, those kinds of positions, members of parliament and others, or to, to you know intimidate them, harass them, and therefore break the back of the population. So I think I, I want to agree with uh, Dr. Bestia here that the strategy should be building a broader coalition of the willing people, of the willing forces of change, uh, regardless of where people are, whether in parliament or outside parliament, a broader coalition, most importantly, focusing on the people of Uganda. And that is why we call ourselves the People Power Movement. That's why we believe in the power of the people, because we believe that uh, Genome 70 may have the ability to compromise a few members of parliament, councillors here and there, but he can never compromise uh, the, the, the entire population, which is certainly agitating for change. Right. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Not doctor. <laughs> Not yet, doctor. Maybe, Maybe you will do a PhD, David Lewis, when the struggle is over. I want a PhD from you. But thank you very much, Secretary General David Lewis. Um, apparently, it seems that uh, Norbert Mao has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chisa Besige. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. One of the reasons we have the three people uh, that were advertised to participate is really also about difference in professional expertise and training. And uh, the next session, which we shall tackle, is about law, human rights, and the judiciary. I was expecting that yourself, uh, Secretary General, and uh, Norbert Mao would discuss the law and as people who are trained as land friends to each other, one as a trainer as well of other lawyers, and then Dr. Vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried, I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet, but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times. Uh, unfortunately, the minister is not yet here. Perhaps he's still on his way because I don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel. So I will turn again to Dr. Chizavestige 
and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law. And the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians? Dr. Vesige. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions once there is state capture as there is in Uganda are the first victims of capture uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture capture of all state institutions uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the National Resistance Movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the National Resistance Movement, which was to manage the power. Both.
Thank you so much. 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 Australia ni Germany Ngocha kule imiri mevili kwe sato kwe imiri zao Okola kasera kawanfu Okola ku weekend Okola nekuna kwe nkulu Tori na kade na kamo kunyumiamune familia yo ya doku chiri ngana bo Omu kisa gugulo Nkwanjuli renkole yo kore la kumutimba gano Online business Kore la wakao Omu mchifucho nache wegomba monsiyo na Aonofu na kasera na bantubo Ngenu buo yolo omu didi Ngo kore la kumutimba gano Techi kwe tagisabu kugubo na Haba kuyamba ko Uweba liyo kuyamba Kisa mitende la jona Okumanyo kukole la kumutimba gano Yita ku www.d-flux.com Obatu kubide kuplase mu Mwenda bili tanu Bili emonya Satu tanu mokaga satu Kole la kumutimba gano Nema binojo Bakwebu zeko Kwa 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 
Ati kwa wadi ya kuro wa sichuliku Mkuma mkazi tata Kona bilala Mchala mkako jia alita tambula Tokita ya musango wako kumuzala Mkweta chemba gamba Ati vitu kwe vitu Mbiya wale vivele Jemuta lekila Kwe mbali mini mkweti Ange jiba mkweti saa Kachate mbala nenge njia kungula Manyabri mchala Bane loza ye Kumye mungo kosa Kumama kauma Maye nangareta chilina Mwapa taiti Jokwala manze roi isu Mimuteweza Alima nangare chio Womu kwa no roi ita Besu kwa besu maa kumute ganya Ya kwa lena kwa rete kwa konga njidia Ama nino kuleta kapia na inkamiri ingo saa Eso no jena ga Na mama mama na kapitwa kasite Nesi teke na na moji baraka Muka nishika chandula na lele ngano Nesi ama nisho no jena ga Na mama mama na kapitwa kasite Nesi teke na na moji baraka Muka nishika chandula na lele ngano Tugenda kuyimba lengwa jitewelenga chapati Bambi na katumwa speto kufa mata ni kufa mata ni zenga aze Ya kule mbira lodi kule ni sebata Omukanda agambo wezi nabia zili ya mchi Omunye wanda na agamba Tebaru manye Nduvamu lile Wangi Mejoga milanti Omunye wanda na agamba
Influence Charlie Kulanga Kulala, Chino Chawe did the African Descent Summit, Pepebusi Weba Gamba, Wadi Nakuzome Zinga Mwenda, Abasala Kowadi Canada, White Shield Banquet Hall, 2300 Lawrence Avenue East, Pepebusi Wena Kuzome Zinga Mwenda, African Descent Echikoze, Mujetu Numire, Tukube Pate, Ataina Sente, Obobuzibu. Influ, influence.
Zinga Mwenda, African Decent Echikoze, Mujie Tunyumire, Tukube Pate, Ataina Sente, Obobu Zibu Wo. Influ, influence ha, the way you move like an influence, Hechari Kulanga Kulala, Chino Chawe did the African Decent Summit, Pepe Busi Weba Gamba, Wari Nakuzo Mwenda, Mwenda, Havasala Kwa Wari Canada, White Shield Banquet Hall, 2300 Lawrence Avenue East. Uganda wangali la mudiaspora, America, Canada, UK, Australia ne Germany. Ngocha kule imiri mwebiri kwe sato kwe imiri zao. Okola kasera kawamvu, okola ku weekend, okola ne kuna kwe nkulu. Tori na kade na kamo kunyumiamu ne familia yo ya doku chiri ngana bo. Omu kisa gugulo, mkwanjo lile nkole yo kore la kumutimba gano. Online business, kore la wakao. Omu mchifocho nache wegomba monsiyo na. Aonofu na kasera na bantubo, ngeno buo yolo mudidi, ngokore la kumutimba. 
mutimba gano techi kweta agisa wukogo wona hawa kuyamba ko uwebali oku isa mitende la jona okumanyo kukole la kumutimba gano yita ku www.d-flux.com oba tukubile kuplase mu muenda bili tano bili emonya satu tano mokaga satu kole la kumutimba gano nema binojo bakwebu zeko one as a trainer as well of other lawyers and then dr vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried i'm not sure he's been convicted as yet but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times uh unfortunately the minister is not yet here perhaps he's still on his way because i don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel so i will turn again to dr chiza vesija and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So, Many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians? Dr. Yesiji. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions once there is state capture, as there is in Uganda, are the first victims of capture. Uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture. Capture of all state institutions, uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the National Resistance Movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the National Resistance Movement, which was to manage the power. Both the National Resistance Army and the National Resistance Movement were among the first institutions to be captured by Mr. Museveni, who was the leader of both. <laughs> so, because these are institutions that had organs that were functioning, you know, the National Resistance Movement had organs. I was a member of all the organs, the National uh, in making the Constitution. One of our uh, first uh, major objections that uh, eventually became public was over the making of the constitution has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chiza Besige. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of 
of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. One of the reasons we have the three people uh, that were advertised to participate is really also about difference in professional expertise and training. And uh, the next session, which we shall tackle, is about law, human rights, and the judiciary. I was expecting that yourself, uh, Secretary General, and uh, Nobat Mao would discuss the law and as people who are trained as land friends to each other, one as a trainer as well of other lawyers, and then Dr. Vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet, but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times. Uh, unfortunately, the minister is not yet here. Perhaps he's still on his way because I don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel. So I will turn again to Dr. Chizavesije and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians. Dr. Vesigen. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions, once there is state capture, as there is in Uganda, are the first victims of capture. Uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture. Capture of all state institutions, uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the national resistance movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the national resistance movement, which was to manage the power. Both the national resistance army and the national resistance movement were among the first institutions to be captured by Mr. Museveni who was the leader of both. <laughs> so, because these are institutions that had organs that were functioning, you know, the National Resistance Movement had organs. I was a member of all the organs, the National Executive, uh, in making the Constitution. One of our uh, first uh, major objections that uh, eventually became public was over the making of the Constitution.
has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chisa Besige. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. One of the reasons we have the three people uh, that were advertised to participate is really also about difference in professional expertise and training. And uh, the next session, which we shall tackle, is about law, human rights, and the judiciary. I was expecting that yourself, uh, Secretary General, and uh, Nobat Mawo would discuss the law and as people who are trained as land friends to each other, one as a trainer as well of other lawyers, and then Dr. Vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet, but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times. Uh, unfortunately, the minister is not yet here. Perhaps he's still on his way because I don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel. So I will turn again to Dr. Chizavesije and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians. Dr. Vesica. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions, once there is state capture, as there is in Uganda, are the first victims of capture. Uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture. Capture of all state institutions, uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the national resistance movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the national resistance movement, which was to manage the power. Both the national resistance army and the national resistance movement were among the first institutions to be captured by Mr. Museveni who was the leader of both. <laughs> so, because these are institutions that had organs that were functioning, you know, the National Resistance Movement had organs. I was a member of all the organs, the National Executive, uh, in making the Constitution. One of our uh, first uh, major objections that uh, eventually became public was over the making of the constitution
has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chisa Besige. I was hoping he'd come and... <laughs> concerted action amongst themselves so they must divide them and even better still pit them against each other so that instead of uniting to fight the common enemy they are fighting amongst themselves all these are uh, uh, approaches that we live with here daily in Uganda Ca they are cultivated they have now they have institutions for conducting all these for dividing the population for causing intrigue within any organization they whether they are state institutions whether they are church church or institutions uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state <laughs> because you know in 1986 when the national resistance army captured the power of state of Uganda which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the National Resistance Movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the National Resistance Movement, which was to manage the power. Both the National Resistance Army and the National Resistance Movement were among the first institutions to be captured by Mr. Museveni, who was the leader of both. <laughs> so, because these are institutions that had organs that were functioning, you know, the National Resistance Movement had organs. I was a member of all the organs, the National uh, in making the constitution, one of our uh, first uh, major objections that uh, eventually became public was over the making of the constitution. Of 
has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chisa Besige. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. Diaspora, America, Canada, UK, Australia, and Germany. Go to the house. 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 Go to Techikweta agisabu kugubo na Aba kuyamba ko Uwebali ukuisa mitende la jona Okumanyo kukole la kumutimba gano Yita ku www I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet But has gone through the judiciary system As a suspect many times uh, Unfortunately the minister is not yet here Perhaps he's still on his way Because I don't think he's fearful Of any of us on this panel So I will turn again to Dr. Shiza Vesije and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So Many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians? Dr. Vesica. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions once there is state capture, as there is in Uganda, are the first victims of capture. Uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture. Capture of all state institutions, uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal not number uh, one. UPC before that. All that is corruption, and so he, he has no moral authority to come up and talk about corruption. And indeed, uh, even uh, the former IGG, Irene Muriagonja, said that, you know, every time I come after the thieves, I found them hiding behind the, the back of the president. So that is a problem. And so we cannot fight corruption if we do not actually change uh, the, the political system, if we do not change, if we do not address the governance question. What we need to understand is that uh, corruption affects societies in ways that you cannot understand uh, because it is why uh, children will not go to school it is why there are they, there's no there are no hospitals there are no drugs in the existent ones it is uh, why uh, public officials are not paid on time and, and they're not paid well it is why uh, in making the constitution, one of our uh, first uh, major objections that uh, eventually became public was over the making of the constitution.
example, has been terrified by both yourself and Dr. Chisa Besige. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. One of the reasons we have the three people uh, that were advertised to participate is really also about difference in professional expertise and training. And uh, the next session... It turned into uh, a, a joke. They, they are just there to tick the box. But if we, we have regained our freedom as the people of Uganda, we will be able to have proper institutions that can uh, ensure there is accountability, that the Auditor General's reports are followed through, that there is, uh, there is uh, uh, you know, value for money, and that if we are to get loans to borrow funds, those funds are going to go into sectors that improve the lives of the people of Uganda. Right. Uh, sovereignty, corruption, public debt, foreign loans, and foreign aid. That was related to questions around regionalism, where Uganda is a big brother bully, bullying Congo DRC, having UPDF soldiers there, stealing gold, stealing timber, poo-pooing our soldiers in Somali, poo-pooing our soldiers in Sudan, poo-pooing our soldiers all over the region. And the regional question was going to be addressed to Minister Nobat Mao, who's not here. I will now turn to Dr. Chiza Vesige and uh, relate the questions of sovereignty and our role in the region of East Africa to your work and training and expertise as a military person. Dr. Chiza Vesige, you're a retired military man who rose up the ranks. In what ways can we civilians, non-military Ugandans, make the UPDF an army that protects Ugandans instead of protecting the interests and lives of specific individuals in the executive in Uganda? How can we civilians who have no guns make the UPDF army work in our interests over and above the interests of one man and his family. As you're addressing us, I will applaud five people at a time to be speakers. If anyone is rude as Dr. Chiza Vesige is speaking, I will mute you and drop you immediately. Dr. Chiza Vesige, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, it was not clear to me how long uh, we would be going on in this space. I thought we would be done by 10 p.m., which it is uh, in Kampala here. It's 22 hours. Uh, Just very quickly to respond to that question, at 10 p.m., if you have to leave, you're welcome to leave. The space is yes, always I'm, available. Yeah. Okay, yes, I'm saying, this will be yeah. your last contribution, but the space will continue, and the people who have been asking for the microphone can take the microphone and speak even when you're not present. Is that okay? Very well. very well. Thank you very much. Now, sovereignty is, of course, uh, precisely what uh, we were discussing for most of uh, the engagement today uh, about people having power, sovereign power within their uh, within the, 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 the territory that is called Uganda. It is the sovereignty that we don't have. Because, as I pointed out at the beginning, we didn't even form the country Uganda. It was formed by foreigners. Uh, we were different nations. We did not uh, agree that we should become Uganda. We were forced to become Uganda. And it's a reality that we have had to live with. Uh, and that force which created Uganda was the sovereign. So the sovereign of Uganda was the Queen of England. Since then, the successors of the Queen of England, who are the commanders of the forces of, that control the country, Uganda, have remained the sovereign. So today, Mr. Museveni is the sovereign. He is 
the sovereign of Uganda, not the people of Uganda. So what the people of Uganda must fight for is their sovereignty, the power of the people to decide. This is what I tried to explain at the beginning, which they don't have now. So the sovereign who decides what to do uh, is the controller of the forces. He's not just the commander of the forces, the commander in chief of the forces, but he, he, he owns the country. And that's why he even talks about his army, his oil, his, uh, uh, the, his land. It's, 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 he is sovereign. And uh, part of all sovereigns, especially sovereigns of old, is to expand their sovereignty. And I dare say that indeed, one of Museven's ambitions is to expand his sovereign influence, to expand his sovereign influence over neighboring countries. He's been talking about uh, widening the market of East Africa. His idea of widening the market of East Africa is not uh, certainly the same, I, 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 I dare say. It's not the same as uh, those who think of negotiation through the East African community, the common markets, I don't know this, the uh, common uh, currency, the common whatever. His idea of expanding the market is expanding his sovereign influence. In other words, projecting his power, his sovereign power, beyond what is Uganda's borders. And to a certain extent, he has uh, uh, done well in that sphere. He clearly projected his influence in the Sudan and uh, to what is now the Southern Sudan in Congo. That is why we are in Congo. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, the, the fears that uh, some have been expressing that Congo may also break into Eastern Congo and Western Congo and the Eastern Congo may get under his influence is, uh, it, it does not come to, uh, to reality. You, ha you have seen the conflict with Rwanda because he has in he indeed, without doubt, intended to exercise his sovereignty to expand his sovereign influence over Rwanda and, and so on and so forth. So the question you ask is how do we regain sovereignty? And that is the bottom line of uh, uh, the struggle that the people of Uganda, the challenge of the people of Uganda is to regain sovereignty. And we will not do so unless we subordinate the forces that, con that took away our sovereignty, that we defeat them and subordinate them. The reason they took away our sovereignty is that they defeated us and subordinated us. To regain our sovereignty, we must defeat those who captured our country and we must subordinate them. So it's a struggle. That's why it's a struggle. It's a fight. We must fight for our sovereignty. It will not be granted. Just like we uh, fought against the, the, the colonial administration, we resisted, we disobeyed, we uh, defied the power of the, uh, of, of the colonial government. Uh, and of course, at that time, many other countries were doing the same until the colonial powers felt that it was no longer sustainable and granted independence. We must fight. It's not, this is why it's critical for Ugandans to realize that we shall not regain sovereignty by going to the fake elections that Mr. Museveni organizes and hoping that he will grant us a piece of paper to put in a box he's holding, that he's going to count, that he's going to announce, and that he will announce that the people of Uganda have now chosen not to uh, allow him to continue leading us and that then he will court coral and hand over power. That will not happen. Uh, I, I, and so the sooner 
we organize ourselves and fighting for our sovereignty takes three critical steps. The first one is awareness, consciousness. People to know what is going on, to know their captivity, to know that they can get out of this captivity, to get the determination that is needed in the country to fight for their freedom. That is the starting point, which every citizen must have a duty to, 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 to contribute towards. Secondly, is to organize. The success is for the organized. If we are disorganized, we can only continue lamenting. Uh, oh, we have been tortured. Oh, we are, our money has been stolen. Oh, the like has been going on. We all know that all that is going on. But to fight and defeat those who are doing it, we must be organized. And this is the organization that I talked about that requires non partisan uh, building of networks amongst all oppressed citizens so that we can act in concert. Uh, we must uh, hold hands with the civil society organization. This is not a matter for political parties alone. Political parties, especially those that uh, are, are not uh, captured by the regime, the, the civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, the, uh, the, the every student bodies, anybody in the country must rally together to say we fight and get out of this. And once, let me, let me suggest to you, I've been suggesting to uh, our people, you saw recently when during the COVID, the way the government was being shut down by orders of Mr. Museveni. Nobody should move tomorrow, and nobody would move except those he allows. If tomorrow we in Uganda were coordinated across the country, we, the oppressed people, said from tomorrow we shall not allow the, the, these people pressing us to move in the country. We are closing the roads. Nobody will move until they accept that we, are, we, we have more power than them. They have guns, but they cannot control us if we want to block the whole country and, and put it on a standstill. We can put it on a standstill. And they will not see anybody to tear gas. They will not even see anybody to fire at. They can find themselves unable to move. And uh, that way, the people with the guns will realize that the population is stronger than them. And they themselves will then capture Mr. Museveni and put him under lock and key and call on the country to help them now and open up. And the country will tell them now, listen to us from now onwards, you are our servants. Go back to the barracks, we shall tell you what next to do. Then we can open the country and be in charge of our country. And we can manage a transition. We can build new institutions which are subordinate to the people of Uganda. Unless we fight and regain supremacy, and we, don't, we want to regain supremacy short of fighting and winning that supremacy. The, the only thing that we have been advocating is to fight not using guns, which we attempted to use before, and we have seen the weakness of that, that when you use guns to fight the guns, Yes, you can win like we won in 1986, but the population will still remain unable to cause those that have won with guns to account to them. So the struggle is for those unarmed, and I am glad that, Stera, you emphasized the civilian population. The struggle is for the civilian population, the unarmed population, to demonstrate to those who are armed that they have more power than the armed. That must be demonstrated. They, so, they, so that then following that, the armed become subordinate to the unarmed and will always salute the unarmed. That's why the president of Uganda must be a civilian because the people of Uganda who are civilians are supposed to be the ones who become the commanders in chief. So the commander-in-chief of, of all forces must be a civilian because civilians must have power over guns. But to achieve that, it has to be fought for. 
we haven't won that struggle and that's what must be undertaken and that's the struggle that we have been undertaking certainly in my case that's my focus since 2011 and uh, i will not uh, uh, relent i will not retire i will not give up whatever the challenges arranged against us until we live in a country that I can call mine, where I have sovereign power. And that is what is going on. I thank you for the opportunity to contribute on this platform. And I thank all those who have uh, uh, been in the audience and uh, uh, offered us uh, their listening. Thank you very much. And uh, I wish you uh, continued uh, good engagement on this platform and uh, in subsequent ones. God bless you, and God, be God bless Uganda. Um, thank you so much, um, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besige, um, uh, a man that has truly gone before us in the struggle for freedom and liberation of our country, Uganda. Um, it's a tale that can go untold. And um, I would also love to um, appreciate um, uh, the Right Honorable David Lewis Uvongoya, Secretary General of the Party National Unity Platform. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are opening this, this um, platform um, to opinions from the public, but also we have a question that has come in from the audience. Um, I think that was simply um, from Victor, but if I think I read Victor's question, I think we shall need to um, actually tackle um, uh, the question, um, the independence to deal with, um, to deal with um, land issues, which um, uh, Chairman Mao had to deal with. Um, uh, I want to believe that he has been um, caught up in traffic jam for the last two hours. <laughs> Just to say um, that Victor Mukasa says um, that um, first and foremost, what is your take on the 300 um, cases of human rights violations that, has, that have been documented towards um, uh, LGBTQI persons and um, those fleeing the country to Kenya Kakuma camp ever since the passing of the law. And I also want to make it clear, the rules of engagement, we do not tolerate homophobia, we do not tolerate Islamophobia, we do not tolerate xenophobia, we do not tolerate disrespect on this space. I am in control and I will drop you off the space once you cross to those lines. So I'll begin with Henry Livingstone, then I'll cross to Omala. Thank you so much, Henry. Um, thank you so much, um, Solomon, Narianda, and Dr. Stella. Um, I'll, this is very, really a very good platform. It's my first time um, on this platform, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't tune in early enough, but I had a very burning question that I would have um, liked Dr. Dr. Bessie to clarify on. Maybe Dr. Stella or um, Solomon, one of you guys, could help me at least weigh in on the sagas that happened um, recently where we saw the Chagulani money that was um, sent by Museveni to, to fight Chagulani in the 2021 elections. Uh, where does this leave opposition, actually? That is something that I, I wanted um, just to clarify on it, just to be clar to, to, to get clarity on a little bit. Um, is Museveni succeeding in when he said that come 2021, there will be no opposition? Yeah, unfortunately, Dr. BCJ went without answering that. And about the homosexuality thing, it is really upset that um, men and women sat down in the 90s and they drew a very beautiful constitution. Yeah, a constitution that protected the rich, the poor, the middle class, the upper class, everyone. And Museveni himself, as if, um, as, as he in the beginning said that he's a human rights act activist, he's a freedom fighter, as he's a hero, as he uh, masked himself at the beginning, he was among people who were promoting these things. And right now he's tearing a piece by piece out of this constitution in order to keep himself in power. I'm among people who are not able to live in Uganda right now because of certain reasons. But coming to the um, homosexuality bill, 
we see that uh, Article 2022 of the Ugandan Constitution gives everyone a right to life. So, um, David Lewis, probably you are uh, you you more vast with law more than um, many of us. Please, where is this leaving our country as we sing our brothers and sisters who are not able to live in a personality that a country wants them to live in being um, crucified for being who they want to be, being killed, sentenced to life? Where does this leave our country, really? Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much, um, Henry. Um, at this point, um, uh, uh, Comrade David Lewis informs me that um, he has other engagements lined up, but I don't know if he has any responses or parting shots at this point before we let him go. Um, Dr. Stella, your hand is up. Yes, Solomon, I just wanted to say that we had indicated a tour our upper limit for our speakers. And out of respect for that, I suggest that unless they want to stay, they're welcome to leave now uh, because we have gone 23 minutes over and above the, the, the space invitation we gave them. But um, the, the space can continue running for as long as people still want to engage and participate. The speakers will be able to access the space um, many years after we've finished and we can pick up some of the burning questions if there's a need to return. But I want to just thank very much Dr. Chisa Vesije and uh, Secretary General David Lewis Rubongoya for giving us the time and sharing generously their information and even when we know that some of the questions that may be addressed to us are difficult, they showed up unlike Honorable Minister Nobat Mao. And so I commend these two leaders of um, political thought in Uganda. We celebrate you, we thank you, and we believe that with your leadership, Uganda will one day be free. Thank you very much. And I think it's okay for the speakers to leave. The rest of us can continue, Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Wanjina Alongo. Um, I think we can uh, we can proceed. So I can take um, Omala. Um, uh, Omala, kindly unmute and speak to us. Uh, good evening, everyone here. I um, <clears throat> have a little bit of cold, so my voice is a, may may not be hearing me clearly. I have, I have a cold. Um, what does independence mean in Uganda today? Um, basically, I wanted to speak about one, two, or three things. Because depending on how you look at it, I don't think anybody will ever be totally independent. Because the word independence itself, if we delve into it, into it deeply is relative, depending on our understanding. Now, coming back to the situation of Uganda, we cannot talk about independence when in isolation if we don't talk about other resources, especially I'm going to, to concern myself with the current issues which are burning in Uganda, and that is land, refugees, freedom of speech, genuine dialogue, supremacy of sorts, and uh, having organizations which are designed to outlast the leadership of their current leaders or interim leaders. Now, Uganda, as far as I'm concerned, right now, we have a very, very big problem. We have had a lot of people talking. And I'm going to restrict myself a few minutes because, like I said, I'm not feeling so well. But I want us to discuss certain things. Let us look at Illustration. This this was meant for actually Mao. I think he dodged coming or something. When you talk about land, when you talk about refugees, we now have issue. We talk loosely talking about balalo, balalo, balalo. We have a lot of people here who have gone to school, people who can do basic research, but they have refused, neglected, or chosen 
not to look at the root cause of this so-called Balalo people. For those of you who may not know, the Balalos we are talking of in Uganda today, those are not even indigenous Ugandan Balalos. These, are, these were among the 3,940 families evicted by Tanzania. Most of those people had originally come from Rwanda, Burundi, and Zaire during the time when there was heightened conflict in those areas. Now, when the Kikwete government chose to expel them during that period, Rwanda refused to accept them back. Burundi accepted a few. And what, what does Museven say? He said, no, 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 if they don't want to, if they don't, if Rwanda can't take them, let them come to Uganda. He gives them blanket citizenship. At first he was willing to give them the form, the former Sango Bay, until some people, you know, actually Sango Bay had been stolen by most of his cohorts. Part of the land of the former Sango Bay had already been parceled and degazetted. So there was no land for these people. Now you find these people mar roaming everywhere in Uganda. Uh, that I, is request you, I request you to um, actually um, summarize your submission because we are limited. Okay. Um, what I want us to, to discuss and to talk about is that we cannot have independence without having our resources without being in control of our resources. And the biggest resource most Ugandans have, especially the Baganda, is their land. And the land is going. So when we are talking about independence, let's talk about the resources, let's talk about evictions, let's talk about freedom of speech, let's talk about genuine leadership and dialogue, even amongst our own political parties, where we don't have leaders who are looked at or who are viewed as a message. I was hoping he'd come and broaden the scope of of debate and discussion. It sounds like the two of you are in agreement. One of the reasons we have the three people uh, that were advertised to participate is really also about difference in professional expertise and training and uh, the next session which we shall tackle is about law human rights and the judiciary as expecting that yourself uh, secretary general and uh, Nobat Mawo would discuss the law and as people who are trained as land friends to each other one as a trainer as well of other lawyers, and then Dr. Vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried, I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet, but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times. Uh, unfortunately, the minister is not yet here. Perhaps he's still on his way, because I don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel. So I will turn again to Dr. Shiza Vesija, and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So, Many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop? Population is, okay, actually land is finite. Population is infinite. What we're going through in Uganda right now, despite everything we went through, colonial and independence and colonization and all that, the biggest problem right now in Uganda is that we're losing all our land to foreigners. 
like native Ugandans are second class citizens. Original Ugandans are in uh, camps of being kicked off their land, of being displaced, of being sold to Arabs as slaves. So, and that's not, not the only problem. The other problem we have is um, I've been finding out that um, our education system is broken. It's our children are struggling to go to school and they're learning not very well. Then we're selling them to Arabs. So I was thinking that maybe despite all um, our political divides, we should focus back on um, our land. Our land is our life. Then I was thinking that maybe we could find a way to improve education because um, the regime is not helping education to become better. So I was thinking that maybe all of us, no matter where we are, we could maybe participate in um, our villages and um, build up education because education matters a lot, a lot. And in all our wars, in all our fights with NRM and Musevenim and his um, family and um, the Guhuna Hunas, we are forgetting that if we do not give our children a great chance at education, our children are going to be sold to Arabs as slaves. Anyway, whatever. Thank you, Dr. Vestje. Thank you, Dr. Stella. And thank you, Wongoya. Uh, thank you so much um, for that submission. Um, at this point, I'm going to invite um, uh, uh, Owen. Owen, Owen, where did Owen go? Okay, I can't see Owen anymore. So, Claudio, kindly take the microphone and we shall have Sarah. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Let me proceed. Thank you. You are listening to me. Thank you. Good evening, everyone listening in. And um, I might thank um, uh, Dr. Kiza uh, Besige, uh, um, Honorable Rubongoya, and Dr. Stella Nyanzi for um, Honorable, I'm forgetting the name, I'm forgetting, but thank you. Thank you very much for hosting this space. It's really, really amazing to hold. always come together as Ugandans and then we brainstorm on the issues that actually pertain to our country. And we always have to come together and see how we can at least add a brick on our nation and see how we can move on without repeating the same mistakes which has been actually happening since the time we attained independence. Uh, I would think that ever since we got independence, we have to ask our questions, ask, have to ask ourselves so many questions and some of the questions that we also have to look at. Why is it that we are not progressing? What are the factors that actually keeping our nations to lag behind? What keeps us into poverty? What keeps us not to really keep moving? Do we have wrong leaders? Do we have Ugandans who doesn't actually know what they are supposed to be doing at the right time? What are we supposed to be doing? Those are the, I think each time we come together to remember the in time we attained our independence, those are the factors we should have to, 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 to look at. And as uh, Ugandans, and we focus and look on how best we can really change our country. Because there are many things which are actually happening and it is actually not done by Europeans. It is done by us, Ugandans. It is done by us, Africans. We should open our minds and really understand why do we have why did you go to school? Once you look at people who actually fought and brought independence, basically most of them didn't actually go to school. This era where you have people with monsters, with degrees and whatever, who have failed to analyze and to understand why our country is not progressing. We are having leaders in place who doesn't seem to understand that a country has to develop, a country has to progress. And once you don't analyze all those factors and keep on lamenting it all, 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 all the time, we are not going to do anything positive to change our nation. 
I must thank uh, those who actually tried to liberate this nation. But it is very unfortunate that at this particular time, we are seeing the, the liberation people really surrender to go in the bushes and fight to see that you have peace. They only liberated their stomachs and their families and a few friends around themselves. Somebody uh, who stays in Canada, I don't know how long we have stayed without going to Wududa, but this is a place which always suffered with landslide and people are always suffering. They don't have good hospitals in there. The roads are impassable. Schools, people are going in the schools with grass thatched. You know, people are studying under jackfruit trees and the mangoes. That is the place where I came from. I don't know how many years we spent without going there, but we've been struggling to go there and give, uh, you know, uh, 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 advice to our people. We give them hope not to give up. We've seen uh, of recent uh, Mr. Chagurani and his colleagues, they moved around the country and you see overwhelmingly okay, a number um, of people. Kindly, who came I'm going to introduce you. I mean, to so we should kind of conclude. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm landing there. Um, I, I would think that we should always come together and see how best we can change our nation and look for amicable ways. We should stop blaming one another. We should find possible ways of how best we can develop our nation. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's have Sarah be nice. Then we shall have JJ and move to Gwe Uganda in the Uganda. So Sarah, kindly learn mute and speak to us. Thank you so much, Solomon. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nyanzi, and everyone who has submitted so far. So, um, such an interesting topic. And one of the things that um, <clears throat> I was thinking about on Independence Day was, obviously, um, we, like Dr. Chisabes just said, we need to be independent in different areas of our lives, not only politically, but uh, economically and everything else. I watched a program, uh, The Journey to Independence, and I would encourage everyone to look it up. It was aired on UBC <clears throat> on Independence Day, but it was very informative just to see how our grandparents, how those who came before us strategically fought or strategically laid plans to ensure that we got independence. And one of the things that again stood out was um, um, the, they were talking about not only independence from from the British colon colonialism, but also from because there was a lot of, at the time, Indians who owned the shops and all Ugandans or most Ugandans worked for these Indians, which meant they paid them peanuts and uh, <clears throat> that left them economically like unstable. So um, they used to, a few gentlemen used to wake up every day for a period of time they went to the old tax park, where the old tax park is now, and they say there was a big tree and he would hold, this gentleman would hold a big megaphone and he would decampaign, he would tell people, do not buy from these shops because reasons A, B, C, D. They were very, very practical. And because they understood that if they, they, they removed the economy from them, it meant that they had no reason to stay in the country anymore. So, um, when you translate that in today's world, our megaphones are the Twitter spaces, our megaphones are the all the social media platforms we have. How can we replicate that in today's world, in today, like today? How can we do that? Because obviously we know everyone has been talking about the economy, how Ugandans are, <clears throat> are not economically empowered and how the Junta and his small family has most of the businesses in town how can we use these spaces as our our megaphones to to educate people to to create awareness to decampaign them from buying from these people i mean some of that some of us could and many people would probably still use these places because they like the fancy stuff and everything but maybe we need to forego the fanciness for now and buy from the local shops to ensure that these people are not as economically strong as they are right now. So um, that's one of the uh, suggestions I wanted to bring to the table. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. 
Excuse me. Thank uh, you. Solomon, can you continue or shall I? Um, thank you so much, um, everyone. Uh, Sarah, let me have JJ, Gwe Uganda, Nze Uganda, and I'll take two more hands at exactly 11.45. I'll close this space. Thank you. Thank you. The host and the co-host, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, Uganda. I'm humbled to speak to you from the Uganda People's Congress. I'm the Assistant Secretary for Mobilization, and I wish to take this opportunity to seek the leave of the host and the co-host to give three minutes moment of silence in the sweet memory of the late Kawaka Mutesa and Dr. Apollo Milton Obote. Then uh, if you didn't, oh, I, I didn't listen from the opening. If you didn't, uh, give us a <coughs> moment to sing the national anthem and the Buganda anthem. I think it should be this moment so that we think, sing that in specifically the match of the independence of this country. And I think from that, I, I want us to to give uh, the moment of uh, of thank you to the, the framers of uh, uh, the members who sat in Lancaster uh, house 1961, 1962, come up and the, the formation of the, the Wiley Committee of 1958, and the chairman who was there, and we give uh, uh, diaspora, America, Canada, UK, Australia, and Germany. Go chako le miri mebiri kwe sato kwe imiri zao, okola kasera kawanfu, okola ku weekend, okola ne kuna kwe nkulu, tori na kade na kamo kunyumiamu ne familia yo ya doku chiringa na bo, omukisa gugulo, mkwanjuli le nkole yo kore la kumutimba gano, online business, kore la wakao, omu mchifucho nache we gomba monsi yo na, aonof na kasera na bantubo, ngeno buo yolo omudidi, go kore la kumutimba gano, techi kwe tagisabu kugubo na, Aba kuyamba ko, uweba liyo kuisa mitendera jona. Okuma nyoku kore la kumutimba gano. Yita ku www.d-flux.com Oba tukubide ku plus emu, muenda bili tano, bili emunya, satu tano mokaga satu. Kore la kumutimba gano. Nema binojo, bakwebu zeko. And then uh, I will set my submission on that, but I, I want to seek the leave of the host and the co-host that will give three minutes moment of silence in a special memory of those two personalities that shaped the, the Uganda we, 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 we call Uganda today. Kindly, please, with your permission. Right. Thank you very much. Um, we shall give five seconds of honor and we shall be silent for five seconds. And then I will sing one verse of the national anthem and we shall proceed with the space. Is that okay? I seek to have the Uganda anthem be sung after the national. I would appreciate that. Um, because it's independence, we shall do one verse of the national anthem. And we shall do the Uganda anthem when we resume the space in 2024 to honor independence. Is that okay? Well, if there will be another chance, please, let's see. One of the, the time we have scheduled for those two personalities that shaped our country, we call in Uganda today. Okay, so five minutes of silence um, to remember our independence. To remember Dr. Paul Mito Nambote and Dr. Kabaka Mutesa, in specifically those two personalities. Please. Okay. Okay. As requested, we shall have five seconds of silence to remember Kabaka, Se Kabaka Mutesa, and Prime Minister Milton Obote. Oh, Uganda, may God uphold thee. We live our future land. You love to free for liberty. Together we are always now. 
Thank you very much, JJ Opondo. Thank you for representing UPC. As I said when I was introducing why Nobat Mawa was important, there were parties that were in Uganda at the time of flag independence in 1962. And it's good that you have shown up for the UPC. I will now take over from our co-host and give an instruction of two minutes maximum per person. We shall go with Richard Nyombi, Tusuvida, Gwe Uganda, Honorable Muhandi, Muhandinki, in that order, please. Two minutes. And I, then I, I, think I will so. follow up with okay. others. Okay. I, I seek okay. to, to make my submission. Um, thank you so much, Stella. This is Nyombi Richard speaking right now. Can you, Am I loud and clear? Richard, you're loud and clear. Please proceed. Okay, very good evening. Thank you for hosting this space, and a thank you to all the people who always hosts, who host spaces to shape our country into the, dire the right direction. Now, first of all, I'm wondering how can you put Dr. Uh, Apollo Milton Obote and uh, Sir Edward Motesa in one, uh, I mean, in one combination, in one bottle? Ah, wow, it's ridiculous. Anyway, um, with the 61 years of Uganda's so-called independence, the only person to have ascended to president without violence so far is Sir Edward Motesa. But again, his departure was, was so brutal that he ended up dying in exile. Uh, 61 years of independence, Mr. Museveni, has 37 and still counting, and the 24 is shared among the other seven people, or, or eight, if you may say so. But I think our independence was premature, unlike our neighbors, other African countries who shed blood to gain freedom to the whites. I will tell a story. Uh, from 2016, uh, briefly, where Dr. Besiji was our presidential candidate, but was detained with the brutal, I mean, was denied with the brutal force to have his campaigns the last day before elections. We began with the day in the morning from Kasangat, and we were supposed to hold the uh, some small rallies around Match Indian Central Division, um, with the final rally at Nativubo. Uh, stadium, but we were prevented first at 9.30 a.m. at Ginger Road Junction. The police, with its heavy brutality, dispersed thousands of our crowds, and uh, uh, we went back to Kasangati, reorganized, and at 2.30 p.m. we hit the roads again, this time with tens of thousands of people chanting, Toka kwa barabara, Dr. Mengia, and still we never crossed to Wandegea, because our uh, um, our aim was to reach Nachivogo for a mega rally, um, chaos erupted at Wandegia Junction and people died at the hands of the police. I had an opportunity to engage with then RP Singanizi amidst all of the threats, but since I was one of the um, uh, top NRM cadres and they Diaspora, America, Canada, UK, Australia, and Germany. Go to the Emirates, and we will be able to get the Emirates. We will be able to get the Emirates, and we will be able to get the Emirates. We will be able to get the Emirates. We will be able to get the Emirates. Online business. We will be able to get the Emirates. We will be able to get the Emirates. We will be able to get the Emirates. Tag Sabuko Gobona, Abakuyambako, wherever you quit some meet and dinner Jona, or Kumanyo Kukolera Kumutimbagano, Yeta could www d dash flax dot com, or what could be the Kuplase Mo, Mwenta Biditano, Biri Munya, Satu Tan Mokaga Satu, Kolera Kumutimbagano, never be no jo, Bakwebu Zeko.
Anda wanga di dalam diaspora Amerika, Kanada, UK, Australia ni Germany. Gocha kule miri mweviri kwe sato kwe imiri zao. Okola kasera kawanfu, okola ku weekend, okola ne kuna kwe nkulu. Tori na kade na kamo kunyumiamu ne familia yoya doku chiringa na bo. Omo kisa gugulo, unkwanjuli ne kule yokole ra kumutimba gano. Online business, kule ra wakao. Omo mchifucho na chewe gomba monsiyo na. Aono na kasera na bantubo. Ngeno wo yolo mudidi. Ngokole ra kumutimba gano. Techi kweta agisabu kugubo na. Hawa kuyamba ko. Uweba liyo kuisa mitende la jona. Okumanyo kukule la kumutimba gano. Yita ku www.d-flux.com Obatu kubile kuplase mu. Mwenda bili tano bili emunya. Satu tanu mukaga satu. Kule la kumutimba gano. Nema binojo. Bakwebu zeko. And uh, the next session which we shall tackle is about law, human rights, and the judiciary. I was expecting that yourself, uh, Secretary General, and uh, Norbert Mao would discuss the law and as people who are trained as land friends to each other, one as a trainer as well of other lawyers, and then Dr. Vesija would have come in as a person who's been tried I'm not sure he's been convicted as yet, but has gone through the judiciary system as a suspect many times. Uh, unfortunately, the minister is not yet here. Perhaps he's still on his way because I don't think he's fearful of any of us on this panel. So I will turn again to Dr. Shizavesij and say you have been a victim of torture, human rights abuses, and undue violence during arrest by police and military officers. Um, we have seen similar forms of torture happening among other, particularly uh, other Ugandans who belong to opposition parties. So many times we've seen wounded victims of torture continuing to be produced and appearing in courts of law, and the presiding magistrates or judges refuse to stay the proceedings pursuant to the law. From your experience with the courts in Uganda, Dr. Vesige, how can violated Ugandans organize to resist and stop further violence, torture, and abuse of unarmed civilians. Dr. Vesiger. Yes, Stella. Uh, you see, uh, Louis just told you a short while back that all institutions, once there is state capture, as there is in Uganda, are the first victims of capture. Uh, and uh, I have been a witness to the process of uh, institutional capture. Capture of all state institutions, uh, which included the capture of the military itself that captured the state. <laughs> because, you know, in 1986, when the National Resistance Army captured the power of state of Uganda, which is uh, very uh, clearly spelled out in what was uh, then proclaimed uh, as legal notice number one of 1986, that on that day of 26th January, the army, the National Resistance Army, had captured the state of U power of state of Uganda and vested it in the national resistance movement. So there was the army which captured power. There was the party, the national resistance movement, which was to manage the power. Both the national resistance army and the national resistance movement were among the first institutions to be captured by Mr. Museveni who was the leader of both. <laughs> so, because these are institutions that had organs that were functioning, you know, the National Resistance... Movement. 
Onko le chigwe mazi. Mbwanda gea idi. Gwe masiki ni kula gea idi. Government iyo. Nyoko ya teka chimu lutaro. No chitunu ya na maso nika kuruma. Kana inolo ya zitudia kumanyira. Ujon unkuba amabiri. Nzendi muliro njocha. Uwe limba limba. Ba presidenza advisor. Hendo bigambe nyoko. Tadigeno ndope wa nyoko. Tinga siyamu singo ina uori gwe. Tadifuru minyo ya suara. Wano, wano furu figa guwa sinzo kutiobu la batu kusoso media. A, owe mudara to owe mudara kado owe mudara kuru. Otu asa mira nawe. Furu figa jaunko lebe wakula kakalamu. Nkukube na emu seven jari hati. Uwe furu figa nsoburo kukuba. Uwe kubantu umanyiro ya samirida. Chipo kesi ya kuzara muo mwano lia uwekaza. Manyiko chigwe mbwe mbwe ya malaya. Njisoa kumanyiru wabate gira ni bamalaya bamanyiri. Don't be stupid. Unda mayiru njiko wali kusura moto ustotu wa samira. Siwa ya samira no go gumga kwe. Nwana ya gara bakaza bakademu ni munyoko. Gwene bakanga kunyoko janga. Linga mazi. Wanuwe bakako simpo kenge nse daba. Okuta kana kabandi okaruwe prinze. Webu za magezi. Waduwa mtuwa hizo kabiru mwana tari uwe. Atene wejiba mina kachikumi umano jamu za ye ujiba mzala kwe. UK, Australia ni Germany Gocha kule miri mweviri kwe sake Saima, mwepe kubana bange Ya Samira Mori Wanufuru figa guwa sinzo kutiobu la batu kusoso media Owe mudara to owe mudara kado owe mudara kuru Uriya owe, we fula moralist Otu wa Samira nawe Nze nagamba, nze furu figa na mugamba wala ina manya kwa atenzi Aresti mi Watu kwa tabase fuko siri uo Ajama nyira kasuku. Kasuku ya kozeti tuchibachita konteputi kadi. Kasuku tasobora kudamu. Nira wafiridemu firimu yo. Mbada oloza bage na kudamu na saimo. <laughs> Kanifuru fika chacha wade chiku tuwale wakuramu. Oliro ya. Onu nye zanyama uli donu nye kamo baka. Luri wali oma nyira kakalamu. Nzebi nkole. Le, aa nzebe na nye wa misa. Chikani furu fika jaho nkole bi wakula kakalamu. Nkukube na emu seven jari hati. Obo mina kuru gana Bwe furu figa nsoboro kukuba <laughs> Ni wata wauna chietu kako Kwa elimu er, state house wayocha Wayocha Wavuma bali mga fumenti No vuma ba prime minister Bonaba hako itamwa Akwa tiridari yogu yu nisika kanda Akuli ba, 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 ba presidential advisor Nebara adisi Yekaya hata kwa tiridi da, Kale dayo labi musefini Toma nyija asura Nika kwa tiridayo Uli kubantu umanyiro ya samirida Ya samirida Batu wali mkweja mugu hafu Uli kusura motozi Tatuboli dobuwa na sipo kesi ya kuzara mungu Mungu ya uwekaza Nakula uli kusoro tinga ni Dubai Ngo manyira manyira Manyiko chigwe mbuwa mbuwa ya malaya What do you know about to me? Ya samirida muli Mbuwa furu figa jiso ya kumanyira na awi Jiso ya kumanyiru wabate gira ni bamalaya bamanyiri Mbuwa juni ya Aze ni mzibu nyo Noko singa ngabu wa manyigu Aike nafuna muku tuwani <laughs> Una anko lachi Nero jaku singa lao kusura moto ozovu o, 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 o we mulebio wa singas Kaya nakura vwa manyira kasuku Oloza kasuku wa ino budebo gwe Bonaba ya kuta Oso ulo kwe marake mikuwana Luambe razo Musoso ulo kwe fukire chizibu Musi ozoro kwe fukire chizibu Gweke nyini empisa zo we fukire chizibu Yotuba chacha ya kuchaza Mbu aliku soro tie wabu jingo Neno naba atudabu balo hondo peza Katibu jingo kubizibu bia ina Otekeke bizibu ya bidala Oyo naeba muomu limo Kasu kutajia kudamu fida mufiri moyo Furu figa you are looking for the vance Teri chabadechi kutuara wa akuramu Ayero ya Ayero ya Buri, buri gwa basi bia furu figa gwa soka Uri roo ya gwe Manjino kuandike li nyalio Tumbavu Nyali wali kusoro Neka nukani Akakasaji ya kakakada kalu wale nziku Yani oyo Senku buge Kwe senku buge Miaka atani Toto narita ya linga Ochari kumasara gwa mitu wala atano Nange juni ya gwe stasobo la kule Nise juni ya soro kuzi jewange mwenye deku tv Mwabasa sule mitu wala asatu Tivi za Uganda zisa sura. Sige mi... We fula moralist. Otu wa Samira nawe. Nze nagamba, nze furu figa na mugamba wala ina manya kwa atenzi. Aresti mi. Watu kwa tabase fuko siri uo. 
Adia manjira kasuku. Kasuku ya kozeti tutibati ta konteputi kadi. Kasuku taso wala kudamu. Nena wafiri demu firimu yo. Mbada oloza bage na kudamu na saimo. <laughs> Kanipuru fuja jeja wade chiku tuwale wakuramu. Oliroya. Ono nye zanyama uli dono nye kamo baka. Luri wali o manjira kakalamu. Nzebi nkole. Le, ah, nzebi na nye wa misa. Chikale furu fuja jeja wankole bi wakula kakalamu. Nkukube na emu seven jari hati. Obo mina kuru gana. Bwe furu figa nsoboro kukuba. <laughs> Ni wata wana chitu kako. Kwa elimu state ya usi wayocha. Wayocha. Wavuma bali mga fumenti. No vuma ba prime minister. Bona ba hako itamwa. Akwa tili dali yogu yu ni sika kanda. Akuli, akuli ba, 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 ba presidential advisor ni bada disi. Yekaya cha kwa tili. Ah, da, kare dayo labi musefini. Ah, toma nyiji asura. Nika kwa tili dayo. Uli kubantu umanyiro ya samirida Ya samirida Batu wali mkweja mugu avu Uli kusura motos Batu wali dobu wana Sipo kesi ya kuzara mungu Ano liyao wekaza Nakura uli kusoro tinga Ni Dubai ingo manjira manjira Manjiko chigwe mbuwe mbuwe ya malaya What do you know about me? Ya samira muli Mbuwe furu figa Nisoo ya kumanjira na awi Nisoo ya kumanjiru Wabate gira ni bamalaya bamanjiri Nisoo juni yansu Kaze ni mzibu nyo Noko singa ngabu wa manjigu Aike nafuna muku tuwani <laughs> Una anko lachi Nero jaku singa rao kusura moto ozo vu O o o o o o we mure bia wa singas Kaze nakura vu manjira kasuku Oloza kasuku wa ino budebo gwe Bonaba kuta Oso ulo kwe marake mikuwana Luambe Lu razo Muso oso ulo kwe fukire chizibu Musi oso ulo kwe fukire chizibu Gweke njini empisa zo wefu kile chizibu. Yotiuba chacha kuchaza. Mbu aliku soro tiye wabu jingo. Neno naba tunabu balo hondo peza. Katibu jingo kubizibu bia ina. Otekeke bizibu ebidala. Oyo naeba muomu limo. Kasu kutajia kudamu fida mufiri moyo. Furu figa you are looking for the advance. Teri chabadechi kutuara wa akuramu. Ayero ya. Ayero ya. Buri, buri gwa basi bia furu figa gwa soka. Oli roya gwe. Manino kuandike li nyalio. Tumbavu. Nyali wali kusoro. Neka nukani. Akakasajia kakakadaka alu alenziku. Yani oyo. Senku buge. Kwe senku buge. Miaka atan. Toto nalita yali inga. Ochari kumisala gwa mitu wala atanu. Nage juni ya gwe staso wala kule. Nise juni ya soro kuzi je wange mwenye deku TV. Mwabasa sule mitu wala asatu. TV za Uganda zisa sula. Sige msika asafana na nge mbuga Mburi layo mga gakura kutivi Mbuja kubani wakasuku wa laina bebe kore de Basa imo Alaina kuzi youtube Bweba tivi za isa sunarachi baina youtube Guno Don't be stupid Tuunda mairu njigo wali kusura moto Zitotu wa samira Iku samula tivi Manjiro ya samirida Sipo kesi ya kuzara mungu ano liyao wekaza Manjiko chigwe mbuwe mbuwe ya malaya Njiso ya kumanjiru wa bategeda ni bamalaya ba manjiri Don't be stupid Unda manjiru njigo wali kusura moto zitotu wa samirida Siwa ya samirida nogo gumga kwe Ewe ya na ya gara ba kaza baka demuli munyoko Gwene baka anga kunyoko janga Linga mazi Wano we baka kusimpo kenge nse daba Okuta kana kabandi okaruwe pinze Webu za magezi Wadu wa mtuwa hizo kabiru umana tari uwe Atene wajiba mina kachukumi umano jia muzaye ujiba muzara gwe Oh, iku samula TV Eska seke Gwe saima Mwe kubana bange Ya samira muli Wanufuru figa guwa sinzo kutiobo la batu kusoso media Owe muda bato, owe muda bakado, owe muda bakulu Uriya owe, we fula moralist Otu wa samira nawe Nze nagamba, nze furu figa na mugamba Wala inama anya kwa atenzi Arresti mi. Watu kwa tabase fuko siri uo. Ajama nyira kasuku. Kasuku ya kozeti tuchibati ta konteputi kadi. Kasuku taso wala kudamu. Nira wafiri demu firi muyo. Mbada olo za bage na kudamu na saimo. <laughs> Kanipuru fika chacha wade chiku tuwale wakuramu. Oli roya. Onu nye zanyama uli do onu nyakamu baka. Luri wali oma nyira kakalamu. Nzebi nkole. Le, ah, nzembe na nye wa misa Chikale furufiga jaunko libi wakura kakalamu 
mkukube na msebe ni jari hati wabu mina kurugana mbe full figure soboro kukuba <laughs> ni wata wana chietu kako pa eri er, mstati hausi wayocha wayocha wavuma bali mugafu menti no vuma ba prime minister bonaba hako itamu akwa tili dali yogu yu nisika kanda akuli akuli ba, 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 ba presidential advisor ni wala disi yekai achakwa tili Ada kare dayo la bemo sugu. Toma ni jasho ni kaka tili dayo. Muri kubantu umani ndo ya sami dida ya sami dida. Atwari mukoi ya mugu aboli kusula motos. Atuboli dogo na sipo kesi ya kuzara mu mwana ria wekas. Na kwa ali kusolo tinga ni Dubai ingo mani da mani da mani kochi guembu mbwa ya malaya. What do you know about to me? Ya sami da muri izi gua furu figa zo ya kumani da na. Nzeso ya kumani duwa bate geda neba malaya ba mani. Nzeso juni yansi. Aze ni mzigu nyo. Nukusinga ngabu mmanyigu. Aike nafuna muku tuwani. <laughs> Una ankulachi. Nero jaku sigara wa kusura moto ozo. O, 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 we mwole biyo wa sigas. Hai nakura bu mmanyira kasuku. Oloza kasuku wa ino kudebu. Bonaba kuta. O, soro kwe marake mkwa. Mwambi razo. Muso soro kwe fukire chizibu. Musi ozoro kwe fukire chizibu. Gweke njini empisa zo wefu kire chizibu. Yotiyo bachati ya kuchaza. Mbwari kusoro tiye wabu jingo. Neno naba tunabu balo hondo peza. Katibu jingo kubizibu bia ina. Otekeke bizibu ya bidara. Oyo naeba muomu limo. Kasuku tajia kudamu fida mufiri moyo. Furu figa you are looking for the verse. Teri chabadechi kutuara wa akuramu. Ayero ya. Ayero ya. Buri, buri gwa basi bia furu figa gwa soka. Oliro ya gwe. Manjino kuandike li nyaryo. Tumbavu. Nyari wali kusoro. Neka nukani. Akakasaji ya kakakada kalu wale nziku. Yani oyo. Senku buge. Kwe senku buge. Miaka atani. Toto narita yari inga. Ochari kumisara gwa mitu wala atano. Nage juni ya gwe sta sobo la kule. Nise juni ya soro kuzi je wange mwenyele ku TV. Mwela sasura mitu wala asatu. TV za Uganda zisa sura. Singe msika asa afana na nge mbuga. Mburila yu mga gaka kula ku TV. Mboje kuba ni wakasu kwa raina bebe kule de. Basa imo. Araina kuzi YouTube. Mweba TV za isa sura rachi baina YouTube. Guno. Don't be stupid. Tuunda mairu njigo wali kusura moto zitotu wa samira. Eno ye sizo nyelete chigambo. No vuluwa no tulo no tula vuoti No gamba bache gambie nze Dalanga bache gambie gwe Mwini nyari ama kama afani Sizo nyeno ya makungula Sizo nyeno jetu ino kufuni na mu Ebiloto vya fenebitu ukila Sizo nyeno katonda Kole la mu nyo Enzi jizigulu wao nyo Atela ye sizo ni Sistani mwa kolila kavuyo kwa kata kolekeka Katiwe banga ye sizo nyeno Waliwebi munga vina kukilisa luampaka Obituke mumu sizo nyeno Nchidamo Waliwebi mwebi ino kukilisa luampaka Chebaite chama gero chamo kama Buli wachi kolila Nawe chikwe uonyisa Naba kulaba neba kwe uonyisi zaako Mwa nchoge debulonji We unya chofunye Na watu neba kwe unye zako Mwendane musigala nga mugulu mizeri nyari ya mokama Katieno yesuzo ni chenja galo chikutuke kolu walelo Kanchidemu Waliwebi ye unye sabi ya waliofunye eko Na ye waliwebi pia katonda vya gendo kusabo kulula kumula mubu wa mwini nyari ya mokama Kati Mwebanga sizo ni ya mkusiga Ya makungula Ya kuli la zanyo dovozi ya mkama Kato ino jidja mucheba ito muzanyo Mamanyi kwe ngamba kolu alero Ye gogoba walu dobu walu zineba kuleta Oba deto biagala Mwenye nye komuno Ngamba oba deto li wakoja Baku walu labu walu zi Oku yingi na mosizo niyo Tonatuka kudalari ya kwe walula Kugula wanzi jiku yingi na mosizo niyo 
kati njala mukama akuwekesa buli choko lacho namo season yeno chikolo okuvira dalala muntu oboyo omutima gwo mu maso ga mukama we kuba kwagala kwa kolo kwagala okubwa katonda we kuba kusiga siko cha mukia sigo okuvanga muvira dalala muntu oboyo omutima gwo we kuba kusaba Bela mkusaba ngoli siri yasi Wekuba kutambuli ya mubutu kilifu Tambuli ya mubutu kilifu Nga sinto ina muana wa mutu gotia Wabula ngo nyeza nkola kanayo neka tonda Waluwa bantu wa munga sizo niyo kutu kilira Weta gisechi nduchi munga katonda kutadekeli iso Waluwa kaza kale mede kubula mubu nga buono katabu watu wa pa Ngezi chizuguru wawo Otambude na koko malibanga, otambude na koko malibanga Na inge guruliga manti njaga lo kukolela na yeka no kaganye Kati wabawe wadeyo masoga wa mukama Na koko eko wala katono mugame nte mukama kana kaze Kakutule kubula mubu wange Okalabanga katono Neka solo kuisa kwa sezoni Sezoni yomo kisa kasa Waliyo chiba itebilo nebisera Ena waluwa abantu banje biloto bye bisingo lota nyongo okereye obango lisingo oloto laba nga mugola zo kwanjula musajja batu so kwanjula bwe bati batu sewo emoto kazo nazi simbye ne inga gwe mukolo mugolo mukulu nga noku na batonna naba nga ne musaloni tonna genda ngo chali na munnimiro kalo sana kuba chiboko mulinya lya mukama babita bilobyo bitose Negu nanyi nibyo tonnabikolotya tonnabitegera kati ogoku kere wa wano tugukubira na buli chimucho nawe tuchikubira kati mwalwa lero waliwo moyo mutuko vucha nnomerezaako njaka la cheto rolira ko na kusomesa ngambe olwa lero mukama andese tugenda kutabala babiri mu lutabalo olwo kulwano lutalo olwo moyo Moyo mtu kufu chani numeriza kwa season yene Ebiru wana viva vinji Okutusu vya season Ebizi za viva vinji Na yulu waleo njaka latukua Teche njaka lo kutuka kwa some senchi nyo nyo Lebu lonji nyo Wetu na vila o Waluwe chigendo kutuka kubula mubu Wetu na vila o Waluwe bujuri sina ubono Wato naba kutuka kuogela Bubu weyo gede lebu okamu Linyari ya mokamu Njala kuwa tomo yomitu kufuchia numeriza Njala kusumisa kuchiba ito kusumuluwa Mumuzimu ugo kule medirwa no kufuchia Shangili, 
know what, yes, you know what, you know what, you know what. Ha! What has shown in a tomb of you, Musa? Eh, eh? You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Jesus! 